So recently a lot of people have been asking me, Skipper, why don't you like Shogun 2? Well, here's me making a video explaining just that. So before I begin, I've got to do the usual stuff that I have to say in all of these videos, that it is an opinion. Everyone's entitled to an opinion, and this is mine that I'm happily sharing under request. You have your opinion, and you like Shogun 2 more than any other Total War game, then that's great. This is my opinion. So now that that kind of disclaimer is over, I'm going to get on to the actual reason. Common misconception is that I do not like Total War Shogun 2. The reality is, I do like Total War Shogun 2. In fact, I enjoy the game very much. Why do I enjoy said game very much when I never play it? Well, the reason is, it is a visually pleasing game. Visually pleasing games are very fun, very light games to play. They're not great for strategy games, however. So, the reason I say that I dislike Shogun 2 isn't that I dislike the game, is that I'm able to compare it to the very strategic games in the series just before and just after Shogun 2, compare the strategy levels and begin to very much dislike the game despite at the same time liking it for its other aspects. You see, I don't think Creative Assembly have really made a bad Total War game. A lot of people make out that there's two games in particular that are bad, but these are the same morons who overrate Shogun 2, I'm going to get onto the overrating very shortly. So as I was saying, I don't think Creative Assembly have ma made a bad Total War game. Yeah, almost the wrong thing there. Um, you see, ever since Shogun 1, 2000, all the way to Rome 2 now, yes, I'm actually going to say it, Rome 2 was a very good game, very controversial comment, but to deny that now it is all patched, now it is all fixed, that it is a bad game, is being completely ignorant to the patches. Yeah, its launch was a bit of a disaster. A little bit of overhype in there, a little bit of media controversy. We won't go into it, this isn't a Rome 2 video. Uh, Rome 2 is a good game. They're all good games. But some games are better than others. Most notably, Shogun 2 is down there in the lower ends of Total War games. You see, if I was to rate Total War games on a scale of 1 to 10, I would not rate a single one of their games below a 6. Most of them would be around an 8 or a 9 out of 10. Rome 1 would definitely be a 9.5. Napoleon would be a 9. It would be those sort of areas. Shogun 2 would be a 6. See, this is a misconception that people didn't seem to understand on my Steam review of Shogun 2. I do like the game, I recommend the game, I'm giving it a positive review. There's just certain aspects that I dislike and I've been asked to share this with you, so this is what I'm trying to do. So in order to make this easier for viewers, um, I'm going to be categorizing the game and then comparing it to other Total War games that I feel are far superior. Um, you will often see my two favourite Total War games pop up, Empire and Napoleon. In addition, you see Rome 1 uh, pop up. Rome 2 as well, because it's very controversial, and I kind of need to bring it up in order to talk about the overhype, overrate sort of aspect of it, if you know what I mean, and underrate as well when it comes to Rome 2. Um, Medieval 2 will be mentioned, but I have similar feelings between Medieval 2 and Shogun 2, 
Medieval 2 for me, the thing that picks it up is the great amount of modding on it, and the DLC really did make Medieval 2 a lot better. So I'm not going to rant about Medieval 2. I didn't like the strategy in it, but the rest of the game is absolutely fine. Um, Shogun 2. So first of all, we're going to start with the very lengthy but very obvious painful aspect of the game, and that is the online strategy. So everyone plays Total Games for different reasons, but nobody can argue that you get more strategy out of a strategy game um, than playing against a human opponent, and so a lot of people play Total War games purely for the online element. I like to do that myself, uh, but only in certain games, if you know what I mean. Um, Shogun 2 is one of those games that I wanted to spend a lot of time online. Why, you ask? Well, because it's just after my my favourite Total War game for online play, Napoleon. And that's where I'm going to compare these two games. So, you see, first, first mistake in Shogun 2 is the hugely overrated Avatar Conquest. Avatar Conquest is visually great. You get to make your own Avatar General. Visually pleasing. The problem is, you also have to make your own army. This is perfect for people who are, you know, no matter whether they're veterans or noobs, who spend a lot of time in the game. For people who don't have that time, it is very difficult to be able to uh, win battles against people who have all the time in the world. You know, even if you do some Austerlitz Kane stuff, uh, your peasants, Ashigaru Levy people, whatever they're called, I show how much you play the game, um, we'll lose to all the OP Shimazu Katana Samurai heroes and stuff. Why? Well, because the noob who formed the noob box which defeated you um, has better units than you. And this isn't this isn't like the game I'm comparing it to. This isn't like Napoleon. See, this is this is why I love Napoleon so much. This is why I hate Shogun 2 compared to Napoleon. Um, Napoleon got online spot on. Its single player was not great, but its online was spot on. Best in strategy wise. This is strategy wise, by the way. It's, I know a lot of you guys don't seem to understand that that's a concept, but it's for a strategy game, that's a concept. Um, <laughs> there are only two things Napoleon messed up, uh, which you can see in my previous video. Um, they're maps. Five of the maps are screwed up, and the other thing they screwed up with Napoleon Online falls into the map category. It's the fact that they didn't categorize river battles. I'm not sure if they did in Shogun 2, I don't think they did, but you can walk across rivers, so it doesn't matter. On Napoleon, it's kind of like having bridges everywhere, and it really does screw up the game a lot, uh, map wise. There's the only two problems with Napoleon. Why, why do we see these images here? of these huge scale Napoleon battles which rely 90% of the time on strategy and player skill over what nation you pick, what army you have, what terrain you're on, how much ammunition you have. These are all huge benefactors, but the most important thing in the battle is the overall strategy of you and your teammates. Why do the Napoleon, the Napoleon Total War battles last uh, about a minimum of 20 minutes for every match I have ever played uh, that's a serious match, you know, with proper armies instead of, you know, like, all artillery or whatever? <laughs> um, why, why do they last so long? When if you compare the times of the Shogun 2 battles, unless you do what I did in my Total War Shogun 2 online video, where you bring in Napoleon slash Empire Tactics, which is absolutely crazy, um, then you're going to have around five minute battles. I don't understand why they're so quick. Well, actually, that's a lie. I do understand. I'm about to tell you. What makes Napoleon so long is they are balanced battles. You know, the tide can turn within seconds because someone has employed a new strategy when you weren't looking to micromanage. You know, you might miss the you, you know you might miss one little one little unit 
who you should have wrapped around the enemy's flanks, uh, but you forget to do it because you're busy micromanaging your cavalry in a fight later on, which your opponent did to distract you, and then he completely seizes your right flank and wins the battle. Shogun 2, you can't do that. Shogun 2, the reason you can't do this, the reason there's no balance in the strategy is because the units are so unbalanced. On Napoleon, they balanced each nation and each unit. One, because every nation had pretty much the same units. Difference to Rome there. Um, and, but with slightly different stats. For example, Britain had a superior line infantry and rifles to Russia, who had the worst line infantry. Um, but, you know, what made it balanced between these two nations is Russia would always outnumber Britain. Because you can't you you can't type in the amount of money you want. You can either you can either set the large you can either set large, medium, or small funds, which makes it balanced. Players can't just put unlimited funds and then put rules in to help them win. Um, so Russia could upgrade all their units and get more units, whereas Britain has less units that are better quality. Shogun two, you don't really see this aspect because um, you get the OP units and you get the underpowered units, you know, and they collide, and the OP always win. I, I often say this, the battle on Shogun 2 is won in the unit select screen. And that's true. An example of where strategy should work, but doesn't. I was playing with the guy in my community called Sticky on Fall of the Samurai. He put one Gatling gun in the center of his army, and it formed like a kind of wedge with uh, United States Marines going back. In essence, he is saying, surround me. So I did. I surrounded him. He didn't try to resist, because he's been saying that he's not very strategic like that. Uh, he's not bad. Uh, we won't go into that. He allowed me to surround him. I don't know if it was unknowingly, or whether it was kind of form of noob box or what. But he dealt a lot of damage with those guns and gatling guns, which on other Total War games, if you do the wrong strategy, you're dead. Because it's about strategy, not what units you have. So, two problems with Shogun 2 Online that I've covered. One, Avatar Conquest makes it unbalanced, because the more time you have in, means you get better units, which affect who wins the battles instead of... Um, who's more experienced, who's got the most strategy. Um, the other thing is, of course, the unit economic unbalance. There's no unit economic unbalance, because you can set whatever funds you want. The maps, did they did do the maps better than Napoleon. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, the third thing that I feel as though the Creative Assembly did wrong with Shogun 2 Online is Fall of the Samurai. You see, Fall of the Samurai and normal Shogun 2 players can, you know, play in the same matches. There is a way to turn this off, and that is respectable. But when you forget to turn it off, you either have to cope with running your men into a, a, an array of Gatling guns and Royal Marines and US Marines and Imperial Guards and stuff, getting shredded to pieces. If you look at my Total War Shogun 2 online battle video, I did win because I used conventional Napoleon slash Empire battles. Um, but I took heavy casualties on my right flank with my cavalry. They just got absolutely shredded by the uh, US Marines. They didn't even have Gatling guns. Imagine what Gatling guns can do. Um, yeah, so in other words, Creative Assembly are kind of getting money. They're trying to get money here. They're saying, hey, I know how you can suddenly start winning online battles against these people who have OP modern day uh, units. You can spend £30, which is a lot more in dollars, uh, to buy this DLC, which has a terrible campaign, uh, in my opinion, and which just 
ruins the online play. Why do I say it ruins the online play? Well, it lacks the complexity in Empire slash Napoleonic battles because it's Shogun 2 players with Shogun 2 strategies using units that should be in the sequel to Empire, you know, like the British Empire, Victoria Total War or something. But no, they're in Total War Shogun 2 with Total War Shogun 2 players. And due to, this is not the player's fault, this is Creative Assembly's fault for doing the unit statistics. Due to the economic unit stats between Total War Shogun 2, um, oh, in, sorry, in Total War Shogun 2 and the huge unit unbalance, it means that people don't have an overlaying strategy. You can watch any Total War Shogun 2 online video. Yeah, there is strategy, it's got its own strategy in the game. But it doesn't have the conventional strategy of every single other game in the series bes besides Medieval 2. Because Medieval 2 also seems like a strategy. It, on both games, it is have a little skirmish with each other, have your archers firing, and you know, move some cavalry around, have a little cavalry engagement, and then pile into the middle. Um, and it, 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 it ruins the game. I, I play Third War to have fun with unique battles, not to watch. Uh, units piling into each other. Um, so there's two reasons people piling into each other. One, the way the game is made. The mechanics mean that battles are a lot quicker despite you are allowing, but despite being allowed to have two times the amount of men on the battlefield, battles are a lot quicker um, because the units are far more overpowered and as such people just charge them into a big mess relying on sheer unit stats winning instead of strategy. There is of course the strategy while during this big skirmish, you know, with the micromanagement, but it tends to be a lot less than on Napoleon or Empire or Rome 1, or even Rome 2, which has its own kind of form of strategy. Um, I think the other reason is the same reason that I would call Shogun 2 overrated, is that it's visually pleasing. It has a very cartoonish style to it. It's People say Shogun 2 is great because of good graphics, and for some reason some idiots seem to think that it's got better graphics than Rome 2, which is false. Rome 2 is a more, much more updated game, Rome 2 has better graphics on the max graphics. Um, and the other thing people say, people who are concerned over graphics over the gameplay, they say that Shogun 2 is better than all the games before it because it's got better, better graphics. That's true, it does. But it doesn't feel right. It feels a bit too cartoonish, a bit too cheesy, a bit too arcadey. Napoleon and Empire both had a very rustic feel about it, if you know what I mean. Uh, with all the dust everywhere and the, the, the kind of realism. It felt very, very rustic, very serious. Uh, Shotgun 2 was just there, let's have, a little fun, let's have a little bit of fun. Just war, just people dying. <laughs> Uh, even the blood DLC literally just looked like paint flying everywhere. I'm glad they fixed it in Room 2, made it rustic again, and made the blood DLC a bit more... <laughs> horrific. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, Shogun 2 was odd, cartoonish-wise. In addition to this, this, this is the thing, I think, the reason people just clump their units together into one big battle, is that... Creative Assembly, I believe, admitted in a little like interview or something, or a little discussion about Total War Shogun 2 before it was released. They were having a little joke about how well, how much time they put into their uh, unit fight animations with their stunt coordinating team and all that. And someone made a joke, I think, um, which he said was true, saying that they actually put more time into the fight animations than they had the overall strategy of the game. And this is shown in the game. There is more. There is m much more detail to their fighting animations than there was to the unit economic balance, the strategy, the avatar conquest, or fall of the samurai. People love to zoom in and watch unit sword fighting. The reason people don't do this so much in other games, I mean a lot of people do, uh, but not the people who are the best at the game, they tend to be zoomed out the whole time, having some fun, but the reason people do, don't do tend to do that on a lot of uh, the other Total War games, including Rome 2, is because it's a lot harder to see the animations. Um, they, they weren't so polished in the games before Shogun 2, from Shogun 1 all the way to Napoleon. They, they, you, they did have fight animations around the Medieval 2 to Napoleon kind of time, but they weren't very good. 
Uh, Shogun 2, every fight had an animation. Now the reason people prefer the animations in Shogun 2 to, Nepo uh, to Rome 2, Rome 2 is kind of hard to see a lot of the animations, all the big shields everywhere, and yeah, the amount of units, the scales, the battles. Shogun 2, everyone's kind of spaced out, they've got enough room to swing their big katanas around and stuff. So people enjoy zooming in to look at that with the cheesy graphics and, and Blood DLC, and I gotta admit, it's quite fun to watch. It's also fun to watch, you know, watching units getting mowed down by Gatling guns with all the samurai stuff, it's fun. But it means that people tend to focus on that more than strategy, and that is why I prefer the other Total War games. Single player wise, I don't tend to play much Shogun 2 single player. I think it's the only part that I do enjoy. I do I do enjoy the Shogun 2 vanilla, not the um, not Fall of the Samurai, I dislike that. Because um, it, it doesn't have the complexity of Empire, which is the one I compare that to. Uh, which is, in my opinion, the best single player campaign. But uh, Shogun 2 Vanilla has quite quite a good campaign. The only problem is you get more strategy out of the economic side of things, you know, getting your unit maintenance costs and upkeep costs, you know, equal to the amount of units you have and being able to get big armies. I think that's the only problem. That and religion. The only two hard things in Shogun 2. Um, even on the hardest difficulty, Legendary, the, the AI is easy to beat, and they cheat to win. They spawn huge armies out of the fog of war to win. Same as on Rome 2, actually. Um, it doesn't concern me, it's still easy to win, but it kind of lets it down a bit. Besides that, the single player is fine. I'm mainly basing this on online play, because it's about strategy, and you get, in my opinion, you get more strategy on online games. I, you know, when I, if I want to play single player, I'll play Empire. Because you... you I, in my opinion, you can't beat Empire. I won't go into that because we're talking about Shogun 2 here, but Empire is oh, very, very entertaining game, particularly when um, you do the, the Prussian challenge, which is where you go as Prussia. Very hard, very hard difficulty. Uh, first turn, declare war on everyone and get global domination. That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. You guys are going to try that out. Um, so, yeah. In other words, what I'm saying is, I enjoy Shogun 2 because, one, it does have its own element of strategy. It's a fun, cheesy game that you can just casually enjoy. Yeah, you can enjoy it. Uh, but, I rate it a 6 out of 10 instead of an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 like the other Total War games. I rate it below all of the Total War games, including Rome 2, which is underrated, because it doesn't have the element of strategy that is featured in every single other Total War game besides Medieval 2. And what what tops the cake in that is that it's an overrated game. People are so visually pleased by the samurai, ninja, katana, cool little fighting animations and cartoony graphics and it's, oh, it's all so cool. Feudal Japan, oh yeah, awesome, full of samurai, gasoline guns, yeah, oh, creative assembly, you got to give some thanks to the last samurai for some, samurai for some marketing there, but, um, yeah, I, oh, don't, it's the same problem Rome 2 had, Rome 2 was overhyped to an extent, and then that let it, let, let it down for a lot of people, I know I personally enjoy Rome 2 quite a lot, but uh, a lot of people didn't. Shogun 2 is overrated, and people don't see this. They don't see it like they do down Rome 2. Um, it's a good game. It's not as good as you guys make out. It's like Gary's mod. It's a good game. It's not as good as people make out. Um, and so I'm going to conclude it here. I'm just going to finish off by saying I very much enjoy Shogun 2, but it's not as good as a lot of people make it out of it, in, in my opinion, or as good as uh, the other Total War games. So thanks for watching, please, please comment, rate, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time.